Hello, welcome to the Trial and Podcast. I'm your host, Bo. This is my co-host, the People's Host, Denny. How you going, mate? Yeah, I'm going good, thanks. How are you? I'm missing the footy. The Ashes start soon. That's going to that's gonna cheer me up. We're going to go to the New Year's test like we always do? Of course. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Australia versus England. Um, other than that, plenty going on in the NRL, mate. Plenty of transfer news. Yeah. Brandon Smith, your boy, Reid Marnie. Marnie. We're going to get into some meals chat. We're also going to rate the coaches from uh, 16 to 1 who we think are the best coaches in the NRL right now, based purely on the NRL, nothing else. But first, we'll get into some Instagram questions. Let's go. You ready? So our first question is, read Marnie to the doggies. I want to... I'll throw it back at you. What's going on with Para in oh. general? Well, you tell me, because how they've let... I, I was shocked when they let Isaiah Papali walk. Yeah. I think... Uh, what back row of the year uh easily the most improved player in the nrl i think mm. uh he was on a not a lot of money i thought there was an upgrade coming yeah. obviously there wasn't enough money offered there and then well i know he had a di- he had a dinner with the bulldogs like a couple of weeks ago but i thought like it's a little bit of showboating he'll have the dinner mm, yeah power will come back to the table with a better offer mm. tell me what you're thinking right now what i'm thinking so they've gone and lowballed one of the best hookers in the comp and the best back row in the comp. Like, to come out and lowball your two best players and then kind of give them a, a timeline on yeah. when you want to want want them to kind of accept or, or deny a deal, I think is crazy. You were saying that they've got a board um, that come out and, and and talk about how how much they're willing to pay on a player or spend on a player, sorry. Yep. And they will not go over that number. Apparently, yeah, they've they put in a system. Uh, I was listening to the Bloke in a Bar con- uh, podcast, really good po- podcast. Check it out. Uh, apparently, they put this system in place after they won the spoon last time. Yeah, they have a board. They get together. They decide what the player's worth, and then they pretty much decide that they won't pay over that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. Like, I mean, Isaiah Papali'i only going for six fifty, was it? Yeah. How? But how do they determine that? How do they determine that he's not worth at least six fifty? I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy to think that the Tigers snagged Isaiah Papali for six fifty, but uh, your boy Chad Townsend seven hundred k. Yeah, I which know. I think is crazy. But um, anyway, um, I just think okay, so it got him out of the wooden spoon talk, right? That this system, and that's probably why they want to stick with it because mm. it, it has worked for him. But to let probably one of the best back rowers in the comp right now, definitely one of the best hookers in the comp right now, mm. go for the, for what is maybe fifty to $100,000 seems yeah. ludicrous to me. Yeah, well, um, didn't you say that Reid Marnie was willing to accept less yeah. than what he got from the Bulldogs? Apparently that was the talk. He was willing to accept less to stay and yeah. still couldn't, they still couldn't make it yeah. work. Well, uh, after the, the Eels came out and lowballed him with 450 offer of 450 for how many was it three two years uh, two years two years I think 450 for two years they came out and offered him 500 for three <laughs> <laughs> but the 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 Bulldogs offer was pretty well like reported like yeah. they just needed to come to 600 and I think 600 for, for four for four years and I think you've, you've locked him in we've locked down one of the best uh, hookers anyway and that's like he's a spine position position sorry yes yeah. spine player so the one future Maroon, yeah, yeah, the one six, seven, and nine. I think you need to lock them down, and then you know I've said this before. The rest will just sort itself out. And if you have a great spine, people are going to want to come to your club anyway. Yeah, like you exactly. can get other players for cheaper. I think out of the one six, seven, and nine mm. at your club right now, the nine was the most important signature. I think so. I think he's he's got the best future, and he added a kicking game this year, yeah. which I think. There was a game, I think it was round two against Melbourne. And I thought he's won that game on the back of his kicking game. Mm. And to beat one of the best teams in the comp on the back of your hooker is a really good sign for him. Great pick up for the Bulldogs. They've done a really good job, but that's Parramatta chat, mate. Yeah, mate, I cannot cannot believe they let him him go. They low-balled him. Anyway, on to the next. Another hooker, Brandon Smith, reportedly um, saying that he will be signing with the Roosters come 2023. Yeah, I think it's um all but done. Uh, you heard him talk on another podcast, the YKTR Sports <clears> Podcast, <throat> um, about the approach a lot of clubs took to signing him, and then yeah. he went to the Roosters, and the approach they took kind of blew him away, and it ended up with a a, a quote from that that's been pretty much put out there, uh, I want to win a premiership in that jersey. Yeah. 
which has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, that quote, considering he's still quant- uh, contracted to the Storm. I, personally, I don't see a problem with it. There's no problem with it. I don't see a problem with it. There's there's no problem with saying, wherever you want to go, you want to win. That's all he's saying. And and the interview was pretty candid. I We don't see a lot of that. We see the same rubbish trolled out from... Like, if he, if he had done an interview with Nine, I could pretty much write down what would be said in mm. that interview. Like, I'm looking forward to going to the Roosters, but I'm committed to the Storm. Yeah. It would have been the same old rubbish. It was good to hear someone sit down and be real. Yeah. Um, in saying that, I think it'll speed up his process. I don't I don't see him at the Storm next year. Early release. Yeah, I don't see him staying at the Storm. You know, and the, um, the Roosters are in need of hooker. Yeah. You know. What do... Question without notice. What does the Storm get out of an early release here? Because... They'd, they'd want a player in return. Mm. And it, I don't think it'd be a hooker. Take a hole? That's what oh. I was thinking. I was thinking a forward. No, I don't think they'd be willing to get rid of any of the starters. Surely not. Unless it's an outside back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The Storm don't need a lot. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think they would need a middle forward. Because... Mm. If they're going to lose Brandon Smith and Dale Finucane... That's what I was thinking. You, Tucker you, Hull. Oh, I don't know about... He's, he's, he's a good player, Tucker. Yeah, Hull. really good. He plays what he plays for Tonga, doesn't what he? What about someone like... I don't think the Roosters are silly enough to let Lindsay Collins go. No. Maybe a Nat Butcher? A Nat Butcher, yeah. Or Egan Butcher. Yeah. One of those two. Both quality players. Yeah. I, well, yeah, actually, now you mention it, I think those two... Yeah. Yeah. 100%. We'll, we'll have to watch this space, but obviously a great signing for the Roosters. Shows where their club's at. That I reckon a lot of the clubs that were chasing Brandon Smith would have been offering a little bit more oh, than 100%. what the Roosters were. Uh, yeah. They've obviously got the club. They've got the coach. They've got the culture there, a winning mentality, uh, and that appealed to Brandon Smith. So I'm happy for him. I'm sad as a Cowboys fan that we couldn't get something done there, but you can see why. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, you guys let him go earlier, so. Yeah, of course. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, this is going to be our last question uh, from Noah Blockley. People speculating Xavier Coates to excel at Storm and be winger of the year. Thoughts? I love it. I think he'll have a great year. I think he will as well. Well, on the Broncos, I mean, I think they just got a worse team. Yep. Well, at the Storm, obviously, they kind of focus on getting their outside backs quality ball. Yep. And I think. He's gonna go. He's gonna go great. All you gotta do is think about Josh Adokar before he went to the Storm, and mm. he was a good finisher that was just fast and a bit flashy. And he went to the Storm, and even he's spoken about this. He, his game changed, mm. like, and he understood that he had to work hard to be in that team. And you don't just you got to earn your spot. Yeah. And I think Xavier Coates, that's gonna be the best possible thing for him. Go down there, yeah. learn to work, and they're not they're not gonna make it easy for him. I think. Um, I watched a story this week that Nick Meaney and a couple other players, they've been working like a full-time job. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like Craig Bellamy, when they get to the club, they put him to work. They've been working down at a racetrack, getting up at 5 a.m., going to the gym, then going to work for the, till like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, then going to training every day. Oh. So that's been some hard work for them, but they know what they're doing up there. They breed champions in Melbourne, so... They do. I like it. I think you will be a winger of the year. You know, I don't know about winger of the year... Because, I mean, you got to think about it. You still got Brian Toto. Yeah, but you get two wingers. That's true, yeah. Two that's wingers. true, yeah. I did forget about that. So, is he back in the conversation? Is he back? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, you know what? Oh, just off the top of my head. Yeah. Done. I think so. Winger of the year. I don't know. He's in the conversation, though. Let's get into a conversation about the best coaches in the NRL. <clears throat> this was a pretty hard topic, I thought. Now, we focus solely on the NRL. So if you're, you've are you been an assistant coach elsewhere and had success, we didn't take that into consideration. Also, we didn't take in, into consideration any origin success. Mm. This is purely what you've achieved in the NRL and where you rank because of that. Let's get straight into it then. Craig Fitzgibbon will be 16th because he hasn't coached in the NRL. Uh, I'm sure he's a great assistant coach. I think he's assistant coach at the Blues as well, as well as the Roosters. Um yeah, but he hasn't coached in the NRL, so we don't know. Yeah, uh, only time will tell if he will move up that ladder list. 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 I think he will. I think I'm excited for what the Sharks can bring this year. Yeah, me too. And I think he's got plenty of wraps of him on him. I know uh, Trent didn't really want him to leave, but mm. you, like, are you going to stay an assistant coach? Are you going to go be a head coach? Yeah, exactly. 
All right, who's 15th? 15th, we have the South Sydney Rebels' new head coach, Jason Demetrio. Uh, again, someone that we haven't um, seen like actually be a head coach, but um, talks was, talks talk the talk of the town was saying that um, he was actually doing a lot of the that coaching work for the Rabbitohs yeah for Wayne last year. I heard that apparently because Wayne's more just a man manager. I think he was doing a lot of the tactics and uh, pretty much put together how they're going to play each week and they made a grand final. So that just gets him above Craig Fitzgibbon. I'm a little bit worried about how the South are going to play this year though, especially without Adam Reynolds. But that remains to be seen. In 14th, that goes Trent Barrett. That goes Trent Barrett. Uh, Poor season last year with the Bulldogs. I didn't expect a lot from him. I know a lot of people thought they would uh, play a lot better, but... I didn't really expect too much from them. Yeah, no. But in saying that, he coached Manly before and had a bit of a rough trot there as well. Yeah, yeah. What was it? Three years, and they made they only scrapped into the eight one of those years, coming in at eighth. But the other two years were uh, were, were just rubbish. Yeah, and I think he won. I think he won three of his last thirteen games at Manly. I think uh, into thirteenth. Who finishes thirteenth? So we've got uh, your boy, Todd Payton. Yeah. Uh, so he did wonders over at New Zealand, uh, down at the Warriors, what a couple of years ago. Then uh, the Cowboys were like, hold on, he looks all right. <laughs> let's get him in. <laughs> let's get him in. Uh, he comes in. Um, he says to Jason Tamalolo, the best lock in the game for maybe uh, five, six, seven years. You're not playing the game right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna change up your play style. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that gets you 13th. Yeah. That gets you 13th. Also, Valentine Holmes, we're paying you 850k. You're going on the wing, brother. Yeah. You're going straight back on the wing. Um, yeah. I don't know. I hope he has a better season. I was really excited for him. Uh, you mentioned the Warriors. He'd done a really good job there when he took over. He did, uh, yeah. When they were stuck in Australia, I thought they'd done... He'd done a really good job, but... Yeah... Jason Tamalolo, not one. It's it's not something you'll look back on and think that was the right decision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who is twelfth, Denny? Twelfth, we have Kevy Walters. Um, so again, it was his first year of coaching as well. Uh, did we expect? I think we expected better from the the um the Broncos this year, but uh, they had a, they had a fair few injuries to um some key players there. So. Yeah, well, Pat Carrigan going down didn't help. Massive yeah. raps on him. Um, they have such a good roster though. Yeah, they need to be better. Um, he will fall down this list a lot if they don't play good footy this year, especially with Adam Reynolds coming in, yeah. um, L- uh, Kate, Kate Well coming in. Yep. Um, so they just have to play better footy. Yeah, Pat Carrigan will will be back fit this year. Hopefully, yeah. he can stay healthy. They re-sign him to massive, massive, yeah. a huge loss for the Dolphins. Yeah, huge yeah, hundred percent. Especially because he was entertaining other offers too. So yeah, good for the Broncos, bad for the Dolphins, bad for the rest of the NRL. Yep. Kevy Walters finishes 12th. 12th. Yes. Who's in 11th? In at 11th, we have Nathan Brown, the current uh, New Zealand Warriors head coach. Um, a few years back, he was down at the Knights, or up at the Knights. Yep. And, you know, he you know, he, he didn't make a lot of noise down there, but he did, he did a good job um, rebuilding that side. Um, yeah, so he goes just above those uh, fresh coaches. I think he does have a track record of building a roster. It did mm. hurt that <clears throat> RTS announced he was going. I think it was even before the season, maybe, he did, said said he was going. I don't think so. Before, Not before the season, I don't think. I think he said that he was entertaining yeah. offers from rugby. Yeah, yeah. So I that didn't think, help yeah, when he your does. best player yeah. does that. I don't think he signed until around midway. They did bring in Reese Walsh, so he can identify young talent. That's going to help yeah. him. And he, he'd bring him in. So, I mean, I mean, it's crazy that the Broncos let him go, but yeah, good that are. Uh, crazy, the yeah. Broncos. They're nuts. Yeah, but yeah. As we talked said, about it earlier. Who else? Did, who'd they miss out on? Cameron Smith, Billy Slater, Cooper Cronk. Yeah, all three of them. <laughs> That's crazy. And, and Sam Walker as well. There's another one. But we're not talking about the Broncos at the moment. Um, I'm not expecting too much from the Warriors again this year. Yeah, well, I mean... <sighs> it's tough. Yeah, it is tough. It's tough, but I just don't see... I don't see a lot of upside out there. No, well, I think that the top eight will... I think that they'll be barely any change to the top eight. If they make the top eight, that'll be a superstar season. Yeah. Like if they make the top eight, Nathan Brown might be one of the coaches of the year. They can find their way in the top eight, but I can't see it happening. No, me neither. Who goes 10th? At 10th, we have the current Knights coach, Adam O'Brien. 
Um, so obviously the last couple of years, they've been played with quite a few injuries to some key positions. Um, so that's why he is higher than some of those players. Um, but yeah, this year, uh, second lowest attacking yeah. team in the comp. So that's why he falls they got, down to 10. they got better players than that too. They should be playing yeah. better footy, but they they missed Mitchell Pierce for a chunk. Callum Pongo was out for a chunk. Yeah. Connor Watson missed <laughs> games. Uh, Kurt Mann's been out. Yeah. They've just, every year, Bradman Best seems to be out of the yeah. side a lot. So They had Lachlan Fitzgibbon out as well. I'm pretty sure they did have Blake Green, but then he got injured and yeah. had to retire. Yeah, well, they it. did. And I think Saifidi Sof- missed some games. That's your origin prop. So yeah. uh, that's we've kind of been a bit leading on in there. He's only coached the NRL two years and made the semifinals two years in a row. So yeah. And with all those injuries as well. So, I mean, imagine if the Knights had stayed healthy that whole time. Yeah, They still need to fix their attack. They're a better side, yeah. even with some injuries, than finishing second last in attack. But we've shown some goodwill, and he's run 10th. Yeah. In, a, uh, in ninth, just ahead of him, is Justin Holbrook. Yes. I think he had a very good first season in the NRL. He did. Uh, have, first two years. Yeah, yeah. very. Yeah, well, um, the Titans didn't finish above like 11th or something before he came in. Oh, well, for the first few years before he came in. And then he comes in, they finished 9th and 8th. Yeah. So, yeah. And they, they stormed home that year. They finished 9th too. I think they won their last five. Last year, they were a lot better. But they still were patchy last yeah. year. I think he was trying to find his hearts combination. Uh, Fogey had a real good year in 2020, 2020. Yeah, 2020. Had a poor year last year, and now they've moved him on. So um, yeah. I think they're, they're still the best version of the Titans is yet, yet to come. Mm. And I think Tino for Mal- uh, Malawi is a part of that. I think he's a gun. Yeah. Big Tino. I reckon just hand him the captain, hand him the keys, yeah. and let him work. I think he's the future of that club. Justin Holbrook, good first two years in the NRL. He takes ninth, just ahead of uh, Adam O'Brien there. Yep. And yeah, he, yeah I, again, he um, Justin Holbrook did a great job with recruitment as well. Yeah. So to bring in uh, David Feeder, Teno Fasul Malawi, um, there was a few other good good forwards there. There was, was it Sam SASE? Yeah. SASE, yeah, which, which are all quality forwards. So yeah. good on him. Um, on to eighth. We have Anthony Griffin. Yeah, he just has a more proven track record in the NRL. I think yeah. top four finishes with the Broncos and Panthers, I think. I definitely know the Panthers one. He got sacked when they were in the top four, actually, yeah. the Panthers, which is unbelievable. Were, weren't they second? Yeah. They're coming second and he got sacked, like. so... That's yeah. that's a rough go of it. Um, and I thought he started really well with the Dragons. Now, what happened at the Dragons last year was totally out of his control. Mm. They had a barbecue and they, they didn't win a game after that. I don't think they won a game after that. <laughs> That's my favourite stat of all time. Um, but he had a really good solid start to the year. Lost his gun playmaker, Ben Hunt, mm. and that just derailed their whole season. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So he deserves eighth. Uh, in seventh... I'm a little bit disappointed with this because I'm a huge fan, probably one of my favourite coaches in the NRL, Brad mm, Arthur. Yeah. Um, you probably won't like to hear this, but I'd love to see him outside of the Parramatta system. I'd love to see him somewhere else um, and really see what he's made of because that that club just makes some decisions that I can't, oh, cannot understand. Um, he's lost his... He will lose his gun hooker uh, uh, in 2023. But seventh, mostly because he hasn't achieved a lot in the NRL, but he's done a great, really good job with that side. Yeah, no, well, since he's been there, I think they've missed the four, maybe once or twice yeah. he's been there. Maybe three times, I'm not too sure. I don't know how long he's been there, actually. Six years or something. I don't know, but I think he's done an excellent job with them. Yeah, and I think they've, they've always made the eight while he's been there. Um, but yeah, I think he's, he's a great coach, but the, yeah, the reason that he's so low on the list is because... They haven't the, taken that next step. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I think all the other coaches have won um, premierships. Every other coach apart, uh, above him has won a grand final. Yep. Yeah, right. Uh, so we're getting to number six. Yep. So, again, this he's up there because of his premiership winning days way back when. Is Michael Maguire. He's the, currently coaching the Tigers. Got to be the most hated coach in the NRL by players. Yeah, well, maybe it's just because he, he, he just might push him a little bit too hard and a, a lot of players, well, a lot of people... Just don't like that. Usually when you hear something about a coach like that, you can chalk it up to some spin or something. Like, it's just rubbish. But it's the consistent story that comes out of Team Z coaches is he's disliked. Mm. He's disliked amongst the playing group. Um, 
I think he's a great coach. Uh, you, he's very passionate about what he does. He's passionate about the Tigers. Mm. Uh, even watching that Tales of Tiger Town, he, you see he's invested. He's all in on the club. Uh, you want a coach like that, but I, th- I just the Tigers, man. The Tigers, I just don't know about the Tigers ever. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to get from them on any given day. Probably their best, one of the best players in the last couple of years, Luciano Leilua. They've let him walk. Mm. Um, anything on the Tigers before we move on? Um, They're such a just a... I, th- I don't know. I love the Tigers and I want to see them do well, but... Like, where do, where do you got them this year? Just this coming year, 2022? Yeah. Look, I think they're in middle of the middle of the road team again. Do you reckon they win over eight games? I think they'll win over eight. All right. I got them under eight. I think it'll. So you go under eight. I'll go eight or over. All right, done. That's sweet. All right, seventh. Uh, fifth actually. Fifth. All righty. So this might ruffle a few feathers. Not mine. Not mine. Yeah, not mine either. So we've gone for for the fifth best coach in the NRL. We have gone Ivan Cleary. Um, I know one feather that will ruffle, ruffle actually. Um, <laughs> Ivan Cleary. That team, he walked into that team. 100%. That team is was ready to win a grand final. Yeah, for sure. I don't think he done a lot. Obviously, he's done something, but I don't think he's done a lot. The way he left the Tigers is the reason why he's back here. Yeah, well, when he was at the Tigers, he left him in shambles. Like, he rattle off some of the plays he signed for the Tigers. So there was uh, Josh Reynolds. It's terrible. Josh Reynolds. He signed him on big money yeah, too. Yeah, terrible. He is terrible. Um, I think there was another... Was there Russell another Packer. Russell Packer. I'm sure there was another... Moses and Bai. Moses and Bai. They yeah. signed him on, a big, on big money as well. I don't mind Moses and Bai, but like not on huge cash. And there was one... Did he bring back Benji on big money too? Yeah. Old, old Benji on, mm. on big money. And he just... I, I don't know. Yeah. The way he left that club and then he, he tanks out. like He tries to get everyone on board and then tanks out halfway through the year. Goes back to the Panthers... <clears throat> And then the way he acts when they beat the Tigers, he, I think they beat the Tigers once and he was giving it to the crowd and that. Oh, yeah. Um, come on, mate. Yeah. Seriously, I, I could have almost had him below Madge. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly because I'm just not a big fan of him. Yeah. Look, I'm going to put this out there. This might be a little bit of Eels bias, Eels fan bias. I think Brad Arthur is better <laughs> than Mike Mulway and Ivan Cleary. At, mate, this, at this time, and it's only because they've won premierships. That's the only reason they're above. I'm telling you right now, you take any chance to have a shot at the Panthers, though. As an Eels fan. As an oh. Eels fan, you take any chance to have a shot at the Panthers. You know what? I was starting... There was a few <laughs> years ago where I absolutely hated the Panthers because we, we there, there was a game that we were playing and it was... We, Parra were winning and it was like... Was the, the Bryce Cart right thing? Was it the Bryce Cart right? I don't think so. Kick, kick Crossfield? No, no, no. I, I, I can't remember what happened after. But a Parra player is running the ball up and then he gets... Knocked out, and Parra winning. I think they're up by two or four. Yeah, and then nothing gets called. A Parra player is on the ground, knocked out. <laughs> He's got knocked out while taking a run. Yeah. And anyway, Panthers players they just keep on playing, blah blah blah, and they end up scoring and winning. Yeah. And then I was like, I hate, I hate the Panthers <laughs> so much. And then the last couple of years, I'm, I'm thinking, hold on, like the Pan, they got some nice players. I like Cleary, I like Brian Toto. Yep. I like Fish Harris. I like Appy. Yep. Um, I like Moses Leota as well and I liked um, what's that bloke Zane Tanavanu yep I liked him as well so I was like yeah alright the Panthers you know you're back on board I'm back on board and then come finals this year <laughs> what happened when they were just was it just they were just slowing the bla- play the ball down heaps yeah and it was just so blatant <laughs> and it, you know it just it killed me I just think Panthers and Eels just don't like each other yeah I think it's just a hatred that runs deep no, it was all those missed calls. All those missed calls. Michael Jennings getting tackled out the ball. <laughs> and then, yeah. No, no, you know, I'm getting too fired up about it. But right. Brad Arthur's better than... Is he still fifth? Matches. I know. Yeah, no, he has to be fifth. Because he... Him and Madge are really close for me. I think we'll put it... We'll Keep put it down. Him. Ivan Cleary is better at this time just because the Panthers are having a little bit more success than the Tigers. All right, done. Uh, fourth. Fourth, we have uh, Ricky Stewart. Coaching the Raiders at the moment. Coached Parra for a little bit. They really didn't do anything when he was there, but won a premiership with the Roosters, I yep. think you were saying, back in the day. Um, so, yeah, with the Raiders at the moment, they had an off year this year, but I think it was two years ago, they 
made it to a grand 29, final. Yeah. And I think they were unlucky to get the loss there. I think Ricky Stewart's proven uh he didn't do a lot at he didn't do a lot at um at Para. Para. I think he coached at the Sharks as well. And he coached the Roosters. Um they won a grand final at the Roosters. Then he went to the Raiders, right? Mm. And they were they were gone. The Raiders yeah. and their roster was terrible. And he rebuilt that roster. Kind of a money ball roster too. Like not a lot of big names in the NRL. He went and found them. Englishman. Yeah, he went and identified a lot of talent, built that roster, got that, not only built the roster, but got the town behind the roster too. Yeah. And that run in 2019 was, was special because they went and knocked off Melbourne in, in Melbourne. Twice. Which is special. Wasn't really it? It was special. twice, I'm sure. Yeah, well, they beat them in a prelim up there. Yeah, prelim. And in the regular season, I think, as yeah, well. Yeah, which is nuts. Yeah. Or well, they might not have beat them in the prelim. They might have beat them week one and got the prelim at home. Can't Hold on, they beat them twice in the finals. No, nah, no, no, no. They they beat them once in the finals, but I think they beat them to get the prelim at home, and then they might have beat South at home. I can't remember. It would anyway, be a better memory than me. Anyway, they and they did, and then the Roosters beat the Storm, knocked the Storm out. Okay, back on track. Back on track. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a really good coach. I think they had a bad year this year. I think. Yeah. I think there was talk he's starting to punch on with one of them at one point. Um. Anyway, <laughs> you, you need a you need a coach that can hold his own, though. Yeah, too. someone that isn't isn't afraid to kind of punch on. Yeah, punch on. Throw hands. Yeah. Uh, so he's fourth. I'm happy with that. Yeah. No, me too. Already into the top three. So at third, we've gone Desi Hasler. Yep. Um, had a lot of success at Manly, like what ten years ago, 10, yeah. 15 years ago. Um, then he where did he go to after that? The doggies. Uh, doggies. And they went to grand finals with the doggies. Yeah. They went to one in 2013, 14, and 20... When, when did Bar- Ben Barber kill it? 12. 2012 and 2014. They went to Korean finals. They lost both of them, eh? They lost they the Bunnies did. in 2014. And Storm. Storm in 2012. Yep. So that's two grand finals with the Bulldogs. Uh, multiple grand finals, multiple grand final wins with... Uh, Manly. With Manly. And, and then he comes back to Manly after they had a shocking season last year. And not a lot of people expected a lot from them this yeah, year. Yeah, no. Now, you can attribute the majority of that to Tom Dravojevic, but also, this coach got this team going in the right direction. Bad start, but yeah, they, come home, they come home strong. Yeah, definitely. I, I forgot that Desi Hasler took the Bulldogs to two grand finals with, with the Bulldogs, with the Doggies. Yeah. All right. And that 2014 grand final, they got there from sixth or seventh. You know, you know it... He could be number. He could be number two. I forgot about the doggies. Nah, no number two. Number two is Trent Robertson, one of the coaches I think personally will finish as one of the best coaches we've seen. Um, I think he's missed the green. I think he's missed the finals once in his whole coaching career in the NRL. Mm. Uh, first year they won the grand final. Stellar, stellar squad that year. Yeah, uh, just crazy squad. Other than that, he's built a culture of that club that's just nuts. You heard Brendan Smith talk about it. Um, they're a winning team. They're a winning culture. I, what stood out for me, the way, way he talks about the f- footy anyway is really good. But what stood out for me, they got knocked out. It was a couple of years ago. They got knocked out. Yeah. And they didn't win the comp. Oh, I think it was the year before they went back to back, actually. They didn't win the comp in 2017. Yeah. And they had won the minor premiership. And I think they'd won for like three in a row or something. They'd won a couple of minor premierships. And he said, they said, oh, you've got to be happy. You just finished first. But he said, well, I have a, I have a different standard of success than what you have then. Mm. In pretty much saying, first doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. I want, not if we don't win the main thing. And I thought that was really... And I think they made a prelim that year. And then they went and won back to back. So that's just... That's a winner mentality, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So he's number two. Number one, you could have guessed it. Uh, he's paying a dollar one to be number one coach <laughs> in the NRL. Who is it? It is Craig Bellamy, the Melbourne Storm coach for the last... 20 feels like my whole life I think maybe 18 years I think yeah. 2003 yeah 2003 maybe 2003 or, two. or 2004 so we'll say what 18 I think years 2003 I thought Cameron Smith made his debut in 2003 well then it's 2004 because it's whatever I think it's whatever year after Cameron Smith went there you know, I'm sure Cameron Smith made his debut in 2013 uh, 20, 2003 I don't know but just the the track record this guy has of taking a person that's a middle of the road player and mm. turning him into a superstar is nuts. And he doesn't overly recruit. No, he doesn't. Like he doesn't really go out and get stars. You, you could say the biggest star he's probably bought in the last ten years is probably Dale Finucane, who was a 
who was a pretty good player but wasn't a superstar. Yeah. And yeah. now he is a superstar. Did did Greg Inglis start his off his pre yeah. storm? Greg Inglis started at the storm. And Israel Flower did as well? Yeah. Oh, he yeah. might have started at the Broncos. I think he started at the Broncos. Oh, he, yeah, so Israel Folau then. But so that's a generational talent, yeah. Israel Folau. And I think they've just gone out and got another um, Broncos uh, lanky winger. I know. In, uh, and he knows, he knows what he wants in a player too. Like, even, I think Jimmy Maloney started his career there too. At the, that's yeah. all. So that's that's how you can tell talent, you know what I mean? That guy yeah. went on to have a crazy career. So he, He's a winner, Jimmy Maloney. He's a winner. He's a winner. And Craig Bellamy's a winner. That's why he's number one. And that wraps up our list. Uh, there's going to be... There's going to be someone that disagrees with the list. Yeah. Just don't don't get personal with me. Just It's okay. If you disagree, just tell me you disagree. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, other than that, I think our top five's really good. I, I don't like having Brad Arthur so low. I really like him. but He should be five. But if you, if you haven't won a grand final, you can't be above someone that has, I don't think. Mm. Is that fair? Uh, that's fair, but I'm just <laughs> saying. He should be five. I think... Ivan Cleary is overrated, and Michael Maguire just isn't what he was. All right, I think he's only been—he hasn't only been coaching for ten years. Michael Maguire, yeah, because they won the grand final in twenty fourteen. That was his first year. Yeah, but you got to think—he had a crazy thing like prime yeah. Sam Burgess. Oh yeah, great team. GI. Jeez, that was a special team. I had Adam Reynolds there yeah. still. Uh, Luke Keary. Luke Keary. Appy. Appy. <laughs> yeah, they just had Appy to back up Isaac Luke. No yeah. worries. Dad Cam McInnes. Cam McInnes, yeah. oh, that, they did too. That's a special team. Ben Teo, he was killing it that year. Yeah. Man, they had a good team. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I love reminiscing about teams, especially when we talk about that 2013 Roosters side. Sonny Bill, James Maloney. RTS. Oh. Mitchell Pearce. Bruh. Jake Friend. Jad Hargraves. Special team. Really special team. Mm. Michael Jennings. At a time where Michael oh. Jennings was untouchable. I'm sure they still had Daniel Tupo back then too. Yeah. Daniel Tupo and RTS on the wings. Remember remember when M- Michael Jennings just couldn't be touched by anyone? Yeah. He's just so... Oh, and there was a try he scored in Origin that was just crazy as well. Anyway, we're getting off track. That's it. We're done. That's yeah. the coaches 1-16. to 16. Uh, Thanks for all your questions. Uh, let us know what we should talk about next week. And if you disagree, respectfully, I still love you. <laughs>